Cumin Squad, Kai here. I got a haircut. I actually just got the haircut today. So yeah. It's so fuzzy! I have such a fuzzy head. I like it this short. It's actually sticking a couple of back. It'll grow a little better. Yeah, I like my hair this short. Two reasons. One, it's like 100 degrees half the time here in Florida. And it cook. some of the problems with the heat is the humidity. We haven't had rain in a few days. Like five. Yeah, we're not going through one of those dry seasons. We're going through the humid seasons. We all know it's summer. <laughs> anyway, so I know I don't normally do a story time with Kai back to back. The fudge? What? Did my camera battery just jump from 106 minutes of battery life to five minutes? <sighs> I could have sworn I charged this thing. This thing's been charging for three days because I just forget to unplug it. Guess we're going to get a new battery. <laughs> I only have two and the other one's at 50 something minutes. Great. I'll be back. Sorry about that guys. Um, this one's a little more charged. It's not 100% charged. I don't know. I think that battery because my, me, gotta get comfortable. I think because that battery was the battery that came with this camera and this camera is like four years old, maybe more. And I've used it, haven't really used the battery that much. It might've, you know, starting to like probably break. Hey, my birthday's only in four months, so I'll ask for another one. I mean, I did ask for one last year. So, where was I? Yes, I don't like to post uh, story time with Kai videos back to back. It's like, I want to kind of like sprinkle my variety a little. So, I just finished watching episode two. This is episode three. Now, I did just upload a video of about my injuries that just happened in my life. I'm glad you guys aren't going, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I hate it when people do that because I didn't make that video for you guys to feel bad for me. I made that video to show you how stupid I am. Well, some of the reasons were stupid. Some of the reasons were, you know, also, at the end of the video, I talked about kind of towards the ending, I don't know exactly when, because it's been almost a week since I done it, but um, I was saying, is wis getting your wisdom teeth pulled technically surgery or not? And I kind of had a little talk with my sister, who's a nurse, by the way, shout out to her during all this crap that's going on. I mean, seriously, you know, she's busting her you-know-what through all, all this. And I couldn't be more grateful to have a sister like that because every once in a while I actually have a question. And I'm like, this should be a doctor question. But I, I don't go to the doctor for like a few months. I have a sister who is a nurse. I seriously actually have some weird questions for her. And she answers them perfectly. So I asked her, would getting your wisdom teeth pulled, that's actually what they call it, um, considered surgery? And she said yes. And my father, you know, said the same thing because, you know, you're still patching something up. So technically, yes, wisdom teeth pulling is technically surgery. It was interesting. So what else was I going to say? I, um, yes. Last we left off was fifth grade, the end of fifth grade. So we're starting sixth grade. Now, buckle up guys. This is the small part of, the smallest part of the beginning of my breaking point. The breaking point does not stop, start technically, really just start to hit on until the end of seventh grade when my parent, when my mother filed for a divorce. Yeah. So we're gonna start at sixth grade. Now you all remember that I was in a charter school as it was called. We had uniforms, they sucked. 
Now, I know some people like uniforms so they don't have to pick out their outfits every day, but I hated looking like everyone else. I'm so glad there's no one exactly ex looking exactly like me and act like me. That would be very strange. So, sorry, I was thinking of laughing. <laughs> anyway, eh, eyelash in the eye. Um, so we're starting with, um, sixth grade. Now, new school. Not new to my family. My brother went to that school. Now, if you all know, if you have an older sibling that went to the school before you, you've heard of the horrors of that school. Now, my brother told me some bad things about the school and some good things about the school. Now, keep in mind, my brother is six years older than me. So he's already graduated high school by then. My sister, my brother, and I all graduated at the same year. My, I graduated elementary school, my sister graduated middle school, and my brother graduated high school all in the same year. So do be mindful of that. He is older than me. So he said, of course, be careful of the stairs, you know, and he also said they had a really strict dress code. I will get into more detail on that on, in a different video because I'm actually really wanting to make this video. Struggles with dress code. Everybody hates it. Like, I went from having uniforms and having to have all black shoes and if you had some sort of, you know, other color on your shoe, you had, you had to go buy new shoes. So, yeah, it was really bad. Um, to having a school where there's no uniforms, but there is still some guidelines. You know, the usual shorts have to be four inches above the knee or below your fingertips. You know, when you do it, when you stand like really straight up and stuff, your fingertips should not be, your shorts should be below your fingertips. You know, no tank tops. Well, they had a, an exception for PE. Well, or doing outdoor activities. There was two different types of tank tops that I've known when I was a kid. The spaghetti straps, where they, which are the camis, they're known as spaghetti straps still. And then the hot dog ones, which are these ones. I have a tank top underneath here. The thicker ones. Now, we were allowed to wear them, but they you had to put your three fingers and put them like, you know, right up against your tank top, right where the curve starts to start the strap. And if your, you know, tank top was thinner than your three fingers, you couldn't wear it. That, and of course you couldn't wear flip flops because it was a two story school and all, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm starting sixth grade. And I'm like, oh, cool, I might get some of my brother's teachers, forgetting that my brother is six years older than me. Shocking enough, there was like four staff there that knew my brother. I'll get into more detail about that because that does kind of doesn't start until like seventh grade approximately. Well, partially sixth grade it happened, but you will meet more of them. So I'm trying to think of also names that will go with them that like, Hmm. There's two guys and two females. One of the females is the best. I loved her. Okay. So we're going to jump a little. You know, starting the school, you know, I was pretty good. We're going to jump into the... A little bit into it. It's kind of like September... Right before my birthday, I should say. Now, my birthday September 13th. I would say approximately then is where the whole... Now... Do be mindful, it's a huge school, there's like 1,500 people there. So, word gets around. Rumors start. We had a substitute in my math class, and I remember this because this was so, this turned into a bully thing, a bullying problem. Now, it wasn't the substitutes. 
problem, you know, pro thing. We had a Mariah and then me. And our names were very similar. I haven't fully said my actual name because I don't like it. It's too common. And I've also, there was also some side stories of my cousins joking with me, but it turned into like, it made me feel like they were making fun of me and bullying me because back then I kind of cut my walls up and really didn't like anyone and always thought that somebody was attacking me. So, my actual name is Maria. M-A-R-I-A. -A. There was another student named Mariah. M-A-R-I-A-H the only difference we I my last name starts with an S my real last name I'm not saying what it is Mariah's last name started with a G and I'm trying to keep this completely anonymous so we were you know pretty far off the uh, you know roll list substitute taking roll Mariah G here you know if there was more than one person that had the same name, they would say their last, you know, the first initial of their last name, but there was no, there was just me and Mariah. So she got to me, Mariah, because she said Mariah G. So I'm like, why'd she say Mariah G? There's, you know, only one Mariah in our class. Mariah S. And I'm like, it's Maria, not Mariah. She was looks at it again. She's like, no, it says Mariah. And I'm like, it's not Mariah, it's Maria. So we didn't have an argument. I kind of was, you know, cause my name's not Mariah, it's Kai. <laughs> I mean, yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. So a lot of the bullies saw it was upsetting me. Now, I was also the really, I'm still emotional at the time. I really haven't gotten out of that stage. I still am in that stage, but it's, I started to toughen up after high school. Well, around high school. I was still the emotional kid that didn't like bullying because, oh, ignore them. They'll stop. Still bull crap. New school, Kai, you know, you're in a new school. They won't buy, you know, Fresh start. Shocking. Some of the people from my elementary school went to that high school. I also remember, I forgot to point this out, is at the end of my elementary school year, you know, we were all signing yearbooks and stuff, and of course I didn't have one because my mother made my sister and I share one, so my sister had it and I didn't get any signatures. It was all her. It didn't bother me. No one's going to sign my signature, sign my yearbook. Ooh, excuse me for like a few other people so the you know the, at the end of the year the teacher's like oh are you guys gonna stay here go to another you know what are you guys gonna do for middle school you know she, teacher was curious i said i'm not i'm not coming back you know they, she was going around the school class and i was like i'm not coming back and she's like oh that's cool and a lot of you know the other people were like curious i'm like i'm going to seven springs middle school that's the local middle school up here so very shocking only a few did but I'm really shocked that they weren't in my classes I saw them in passing which is passing through periods now we had six class six classes per day so I you know it the Mariah whole back to the story the Mariah thing got to me a lot of people found out they started calling me Mariah now like I said it's a huge school I can cut some people a lot of slack like I can give them a lot of okays because a lot of people didn't know me. So they thought my name was Mariah. That happened a few times with me. They're like, you're Mariah, right? And I'm like, no, that's not my name. That was a, that's a rumor and a bully name. So they're like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I, I can, I can be way okay with those people. It's okay. So I had a bunch of, so it turned into a big thing. I went to the counselor. The counselor knew my brother. So this is this is count this is person that knows my brother one. And be mindful, my brother wasn't the best kid in the world. He wasn't the worst, but he wasn't the best either. He did get in trouble, you know everybody gets in trouble. So if you re if you remember at the beginning, you know you had siblings where if they went into the school before you, 
It's called the past. Either the teachers think you're going to be someone different or exactly like your sibling. You know, he was like, oh, I, isn't your brother, you know, named my brother's name? Brother Dragonstone. There we go. I, I, I don't know if my brother's allowed, I don't know if I'm allowed to say my brother's name. I didn't get his consent, so Brother Dragonstone. Your, your brother's named your Brother Dragonstone, right? Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, I, I was his counselor too. And I'm like, oh, cool. Boy, this counselor really needed to shut the up sometimes. And I say that in the nicest way possible. Every time I got in trouble, I would go to him and you know when I was upset I was told a lot that I acted a lot like my brother and the one thing and I'm gonna tell you this that upsets me is comparing me to someone else now, that comes to a thing where it gets overhand. I don't mind people comparing certain things to me, but where it comes to like, oh, you're acting exactly like your brother. Like, oh, you look like your father. Oh, you look like your mother. Doesn't really bother me. I look like both my parents. I can literally put a side-by-side -side comparison of my father and my mother and me, and a lot of people would say I look a lot like my father because... I inherited the chubby cheeks. Sorry, I had to do that. But I inherited the chubby cheeks. Inherited my mother's really dark hair, even though my father's hair is black. But anyway, <laughs> getting completely off topic. But yeah, I don't like it when people compare me to other things. Like, oh, you know, you're acting exactly like a child. I act like a child all the time. You, got, you just can't blame me for that. So, what did I say? Those things. Oh yeah. So I don't know if I said this in episode two. I, I kind of what I have to do is I kind of stop at like I watched the second ep I watched the previous episode, but I watched towards the end just so I know exactly where I left off. I don't rewatch the entire video. I was really bad. I wasn't as distracted though. Stop distracting yourself. God. Um, so, I'm losing track again. This is what happened in episode one. Where was I? Counselor. Yeah, so I don't like when people do that to me. Anyways, I don't know who to call this counselor. Call him Mr. Foot. His real name is really funny, that's why. Let's call him Mr. Foot. Oh god, now I can't be serious with it. <laughs> okay, Mr. Foot. I had to go to Mr. Foot. <laughs> I can't be serious with him. I had to go to Mr. Foot a lot. Because they would send me to him when I was upset. Yeah. Now I'm not trying to talk about the, all the bad stuff that happened in my life. I had some pretty good times in middle school. I had the real, I had the best science teacher. He was funny. I really wish a lot of teachers were like him. So, it was around your birthday. And he knew everybody's birthday because he had, he kind of had everyone fill out like a form. Not in like a, you just like a little bit about, say a little bit about yourself. You know, you know, your, your name, your age, your birthday. You know, do you have any siblings? What are their names? You know. If you have a pet, and then you know just a little bit about yourself, your hobbies and all that, you know, that kind of stuff. So he knew everybody's birthday. When it was around your birthday and you knew when you went into his class, he was going to make the whole class sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> I was embarrassed, but I also was laughing because he made it really funny. He would be like, okay, everybody, let's sing happy birthday to blah, blah, blah. And then he would, you know, make jokes with our names. He would call me Snickers as a joke. Because my last name was one of those, it wasn't hard to pronounce. Like, it was more hard to pronounce in my elementary school because not a lot of people had my last name. 
like you know there was a very common it was a little easier to pronounce in my middle school because there was a few teachers that actually had my last name and i've gotten confused multiple times by some staff are you related to mr s and i'm like no i'm not my my parents aren't teachers so there you go wait i don't know why my eyebrows are so itchy so that was you know i like six curves pretty cool let's get to the fun part um, now this is going to start a little depressing, but it's going to get a lot better. I was around my birthday. I wore some new things I got for my birthday. My grandparents gave me some jewelry. I, I wore it and, you know, I'm just walking around. I even said it, hey, it was my birthday, you know, have, you know, a lot of people knew because around my birthday, I kind of bragged a little. Hey, it's my birthday. So, nobody... It was barely anybody who said happy birthday. Of course, the teachers, you know, say happy birthday, you know. I was kind of not wanting the teachers to say it. I wanted more of the students to say it. So I felt like, you know, hey, I've noticed, you know. I'm not like a little shadow in the wind, you know, just walking around. Yay. Now, if you guys have watched the My Injuries video, I did say that I was pushed down the stairs. This is the school I got pushed down the stairs. And I, it actually happened in sixth grade. It didn't happen around that, around the time, this time, but I'm just saying that so you guys are somewhat connected to the story. Uh, I was walking to lunch, really upset. I ran into Mr. Foote. Now, Mr. Foote was a nice guy to me, in my opinion. My mother didn't like him. If you don't like a lot of people. Now I ran into Mr. Foot. I still can't be serious with this. So I'm telling him that it was my birthday and nobody said happy birthday besides teachers. He kept saying, oh, you know, at least, you know, the teachers did. I'm like, yeah, but I want to. Two people pop up randomly, late for lunch. One of them was shy. Shy, I love you. And, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say her name. I mean, we don't talk much anymore, but we still talk, you know, every once in a while when we feel like it. We're going to call her Leisha. Leisha. She knows who I'm talking about, though. So both of them were walking from their class to lunch. And they spotted me upset, and they just came up running and saying, Oh, hi, hi. Oh, my God, I love you, Julie, blah, blah. And that hit it off. That was the beginning of my friendship with Shy. Yep. I was 11. And I became best friends with Cheyenne. I'm sending her this video, by the way. I sent her the last one. She laughed. <laughs> Because I fell out of the attic and she was there. We still laugh about that one. And yeah, I fell out of an attic. You have to watch that video to understand it. So, anyway, our friendship hit off. And we did have some hiccups in the friendship, you know. We weren't all in the same classes. Understandable. Mm. That's one of them. That was actually one of the biggest ones. The only thing we had in common was lunch sucked. We didn't even have like, you know, PE or anything together. So in this school for sixth graders, unless you had other requirements, like if you failed the end of course exam and reading, you have, would have two periods of reading, you know, intensive reading. So if for sixth graders, you would have chosen one of three things, the elective wheel, choir or band. The elective wheel is two semesters as uh, two quarters. Now we, you know, semesters is two halves of the year. Now we split them at those semesters in half. So it would be two quarters and that's what we call them quarters of PE. And then the other two quarters was, well, not anymore. This class was taken out, but one of them was art. And then the other one was called critical thinking. Now critical thinking is no longer there. It's replaced with drama now. I found out because, like I said, 
Sherry Ann still went to that school and I left. So, PE, now, oh, I forgot there's actually five people that knew my brother. Six. Both of the coaches knew my brother. Now my, my, the, one of the coaches was a nice guy. We missed around. Now, I have to do, say, I have to say something. It's a public middle school. Think about that. A lot of people in the middle school probably live in your neighborhood, especially on the same bus. I had this kid whose sister was also going, but she was going to the high school. Now, my, bro my sister went to the high school. The middle school and the high school were on the same grounds. You know, they were sep completely separate buildings, you know, completely se separate areas, but they were on the same grounds. So the middle schoolers and the high schoolers were on the same bus. Now, cool kids sat in the back, you know, uncool people saw, sat in the front. Um, so the kid, and I known this kid because of the neighborhood, you know, word goes around. He was not in my classes, but he was in my PE class because they kind of mushed all the sixth graders into different groups, but he was in my PE class. Um, he was a really big bully. Teachers never, you know, saw anything. Now, I kind of don't want to get this into depression and stuff, but yeah, I don't want to make this all depressing, but it kind of was, my life was kind of bad back then. I was dealing with my parents fighting got even worse. My school was horrible. Like, it, I didn't say the school is horrible. My grades were bad. I was really having the gut feeling of them getting divorced one day because I heard a lot of stories about divorces and, you know, we also had um civics, which is kind of like economics, but a, economics mostly focuses on the trying to explain civics mostly focuses on the history of the government in a way but it focuses on specific things so we were talking about laws the, now the, this is seventh grade okay so i kind of learned how divorces worked before oh my god 23 minutes left on this battery i might have to make this a two-day filming thing because of my batteries i seriously am probably gonna be asking for another battery i don't think i could last four months I wonder if eBay is selling another battery. You know, the battery that I bought, on, that my dad got me on eBay worked. So I might just ask him if he could reorder another one. And I just pay him back. Okay, that's gonna work. Sorry, distracted, but battery is gonna die. So, I mean, we learned about laws and divorcing and stuff. The gut feeling kind of started like, I know they're probably gonna separate or something or leave, you know, leave each other. Started in sixth grade. <coughs> now the whole Mariah thing was still going on. I was called Mariah everywhere. Now, like I said, I can understand some people who didn't know me and thought my name was Mariah because that's what they heard. It's understandable, but a lot of people did it, you know, as a bully thing. I, sixth grade, there was, it was, rough. Mm, I don't really, there wasn't really that much problems in sixth grade besides like grades and behaviors and stuff, but like nothing really like exciting. Parent teacher meetings, done. That's exciting. <laughs> nah, I, I just had to have some really cool teachers. So yeah, I was bullied a lot. I also hated group projects. And I'll get more into detail in set when I hit the seventh grade mark, which I'm about to, because you'll understand a little more of the seventh grade part, because I've told the story many times to some people. Seventh grade's rolling around. Yay. S get approximately the same kids. Approximately. Sometimes you don't. But 
we're going in for the meet the teachers day and get my schedule day. And if we have any like problems to talk to the administrators, we kind of have those. And also, uh, you know, get our uh, school supply list. You know, one of those days. I wouldn't call it orientation because, you know, it's seventh grade. I went up there, you know, to get my schedule. They were like, oh, our one of our teacher, you know, all our teachers aren't in our room, you know, in the room, so you can't meet them. I found out, and the sixth graders are split off. The school, the school kind of had like were split off into like um, it, it, the teams they were called. Like you know, you would have like say two groups of fourth graders, and one would be four A, four B, you know that kind of thing. I said that in my um, you know, previous episode. So these are split off into teams. Now we would have like team seven A. Now that was my first team. That was my first section of seventh grade. Because I went to a different one. They were like, oh, by the way, you know, all the teachers are actually helping around this area, so you won't be meeting them until the first day. I was like, okay. I was like, oh, by the way, this is our team leader. I really want to say a really bad word, but I know you do want to let it show up. We're going to call her Miss Buttface. There we go. She was a rude one, that's why. This is the problems. Okay. She gave me a dirty look. I don't know. I remember this. And I should have said this to my mother because back then my mother and I had a really good relationship. You'll get it later. She gave me a side eye look that made, that kind of looked like the, you know, like I don't like you look or I know you're going to be trouble look. And I didn't notice it, but then I, then nowadays I kind of noticed that she did give me that bad look. So I went around toward the school again, even though I knew where everything was. Since we found out my teachers weren't going to be there, my mom was like, you know, let's just go home then. You got your uh, school supply list, you know, you got this, you got that, we just could go home now. So let's move in. Because I couldn't meet any of my teachers, except for like a few of them. So my first day of school rolls around, I have all my stuff. First period, I get Mr. Foote's wife, Mrs. Foot. Mrs. Foot knew my brother. Now, if I can remember this properly, my brother wasn't behaving very well in Mrs. Foot's class. I still can't be serious with the foot thing. But I can't say, I don't, I'm trying to make this as anonymous as possible. So she's all like, I, I kind of recognize some faces. Some of you had siblings, you know, they were quick. So it's like, hey, raise your hand if you had a sibling that used to go here. And I raised mine, like, okay, I know you, I know you, you know. She had a few. So she's like, oh, it's, it's nice to, you know, see some, you know, familiar faces in a way, because some of us were probably dragged to the school to meet the teachers. Yes, that happens. That does happen. So the first few months were, I wouldn't say pure hell, but they were. Remember Miss Buttface? I don't know what I did to her, but she did not like me. Now, I'm not over exaggerating with all this. This is actual stuff that happened. We had a class where we were learning about points on a graph in math. Oh my God, five minutes left on this battery. Okay. We're gonna have to do this tomorrow. But I'm getting to the good part. We were learning about points on a graph. Seriously, I'm not gonna remember this. Even if I do write it down, we'll lose the paper. Cause I gotta go food shopping tomorrow. I gotta read the cookie aisle. So, if you guys need me tomorrow, I'll be raiding the cookie aisle. Black screen. Tomorrow. That's literally how I'm going to edit it. So, um, see you guys tomorrow for the... I'm not going to make this a video. I got to get it done. But this is way too short of a video in my opinion. Day two.
fudge. I forgot where I left off. <laughs> I should have wrote this down. <sighs> I remember we were in seventh grade. Oh, now I remember. You done? <laughs> you done yet? Okay, this is technically day two. I will kind of write something in between the editing process of what's going on. Right now the batteries are working. And I know why this one's breaking. This camera I got for my 16th birthday. It's about five years old. Actually, it's lost this long and I'm happy. Just go back to eating, you fatty. <laughs> Bird. Why? I forgot to turn off my TV. I was eating dinner. It was good dinner. So, Make it comfortable. Okay, so when I last left off, uh, oh wait, I was talking about the batteries. It says this computer, this uh, camera is approximately five years old. I mean, it's going to be six this year. The battery, I have two batteries, by the way. One of them I just got last year for my birthday, and then this one it came with the camera, so I can understand. After a while, it'll stop working. That's 100% okay. It just annoyed the crap out of me. So I'm hoping to get another battery to replace this one when I can. They don't make this camera model anymore so I can't buy the battery anymore. So I gotta like, at a regular store, so I gotta buy it on like Amazon or eBay or something. Yeah, it sucks. But I mean, do what you gotta do. It's also really hot in here. Darn to sweat again. It was 107 degrees today. It said it was like 90 something, but the real feel was 107 degrees. So, I last left off. We were talking about, I don't know. Okay, we had Mr. Foot and Mrs. Foot. I'm trying to remember who I, cause I don't want to like, you know, cause like I said, I never watched the clip. I forgot to. She told me she'll Watch the clip, guy. I'm such an idiot. Anyway. Oh, that, yeah, it was Miss Buttface. <laughs> I, I had some really, really bad people. Okay. I'm also trying to keep this 100% as much as anonymous as possible, except for, you know, a few people who let me, you know, say their name. We were at the part where I was in math class, and we were learning about points on a line. You know, points on a graph. You know, like, doot, 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 doot. You know, there's some really cool graph games that, you know, little activities that you can learn points on a graph. And if you do them and then connect all the dots, they turn into a picture. They're really fun, by the way. So we were given graph paper. Or, yeah, we were given graph paper and a ruler. And we were supposed to draw the line um, straight, like completely straight. Now, I'm really bad at drawing straight lines unless there's a guide like I can't like if you take if you give me a piece of computer paper with no lines at all and tell me to draw a straight line it'll be very wonky like very not straight at all but if you gave me like lined paper or graph paper it'll be it'll look really straight it won't be perfectly straight but it will be you know straight so I would have to explain this in drawing, but it's going to be hard to explain. So you know how tiny graph paper squares are? They're very tiny. I was getting to that part. He wants me to tell the part about how I had to get the school district involved. That's coming up. That's coming up. And also do with Miss Buttface. 
Anyway, thank you, bird, for reminding me. Go scratch your butt. He's literally scratching his butt. <laughs> if I could just film a video of the bird, I would, but... Go in your house. Yeah, he don't like it. I don't know why. So, like I said, we're supposed to draw him with the ruler, and I'm not the best at drawing with the ruler. That's why I have a special ruler with a grip on it. They gave us, you know, those really cheap wooden ones that slide around like crazy. And for me to be able to keep the ruler from moving, I have to put my whole arm on it. I don't know why, but I just don't have a good enough grip with it. So I have to put my whole arm on the ruler to be able to draw the line. And I didn't because, well, the desks were like really small. So putting your arm, on, the entire arm on the ruler would be putting your, your elbow on someone else, on the person next to you's desk. There you go. So I did it as best as I could. I, do I have a ruler? Ah, it's in my room. All my craft stuff and drawing stuff's in my room. I was at least a centimeter off. Now, my entire line was straight except for a very small corner. Like, the very end. And it was a centimeter off. Now, Miss Buttface was walking around, you know. She would literally inspect the class like she was a, a, a jail warden. Like, making sure... You know, no one's like sneaking in outdoor food or having cell phones or anything. She literally was a really strict and it was really bad. So I drew mine and I'm doing, you know, what they're telling, you know, I was on to the next step. We were writing down which, you know, parts is what. She comes over and says, your, your line's not straight. And I'm looking at it and I said, yeah, it's straight. She's like, that end isn't straight. It was literally a centimeter off and it wasn't even that much of the line. It was like literally, an, it was like a half an inch of the line. Very small, by the way, you know, we had to make the whole graph paper into the graph. So it was like the very end of the paper that was off. You can see I'm getting upset because this was so stupid, in my opinion. It has to be completely 100% straight. And I'm like, I'll redo it. So I did it and I didn't even use the ruler. I told her, I can't, rulers and me don't get along. You know, I was telling her that I have to put my whole arm on the ruler to be able to get it to stay because you guys have the really crappy rulers. You know, you got the cheap wooden ones that slide around all over the place. So then she was like, here, I'll do it. I'll, I'll hold the ruler for you. And I'm like, I don't need help. Now keep this in mind. The school knew I, had, I was disabled. The school knew I had bipolar and ADHD. They also knew I had behavioral problems. So this t person, I can't call her a teacher because she's technically not a teacher. We had like five teachers, yeah, pro like five or six teachers per team. And then we had a team leader. And sometimes it was either a teacher that was a team leader or a whole nother staff member. So my team had a whole different staff member as a team leader. So we had our five teachers or six teachers, and then we had this team leader. It was a whole separate person. So she would walk into classrooms and make sure everyone's doing everything. The weirdest part is she was always in my class. Like every time I was in a class, she was there. So what upset me the most was she was all like, here, I'll hold the ruler for you. It's like, I don't need help. I can hold the ruler. It's just making the longer lines, the ruler will slide. So what I'd have to end up doing is draw a little, move, you know, move my hand a little to move the ruler, draw a little and continue like that. And yes, it will still be off. So she's like, so she literally took the ruler, you know, placed it down. So I was getting upset because I kept telling her I didn't need help. So I drew the line. She was like, draw right here. And I'm like, I'm not, she kept treating me like I was stupid. I real. I will not, I'm not exaggerating. This person literally was 
treating me like I was completely stupid. Like I didn't know how to hold a ruler or I didn't know how to draw a straight line. Like she really was going out of her way to make, make me feel like I was stupid. I still can't draw straight lines. <laughs> Sorry guys, I can't draw straight lines because I'm straight. I'm not straight at all. <laughs> I'm not straight, so that's why I can't draw straight lines. Oh, it was really, it was really messed up, but I had to. It was something I, I was a joke I made with some friends. <laughs> but it was stupid. <laughs> no hate. But, um, it, it just was, uh, it was just upsetting. Like, if you were in class and you did the assignment 99.9% .9 perfect, this person would find every flaw of that 1.1% that made it wrong and tells you to correct it to be 100% perfect. I can understand they want us to graduate, but it was like, she also treated it also like I was really stupid. Like I was really messed up and I didn't know anything. Yes, I don't, I don't have a learning disability. I'm just slow. And a lot of people are, are slower than other learners. So I was trying to, you know, do the next step. And, you know, because the person, the teacher was writing down all the stuff that we were supposed to do. And I was trying to follow along because I was actually on point and she's pushing me behind. So I was upset. So I drew the line. I drew it. Okay, you're going, you're going to the principal's office. You got a referral. How the heck did I get a referral? I did it aggressively. I drew the line and I was upset. So yes, I drew it hard and fast because also when I draw it really fast and hard, it comes out straighter. So I got a referral that day. <laughs> now, I didn't just get a referral. My mother got an email from this person too. Yay! My mother actually was laughing. Now, remember, my mother and I don't have the best relationship right now. We're st I'm trying to build it up, but she doesn't want it. Or she thinks she wants it, but she doesn't. Uh, anyway, so back, the, back in the childhood days of Kai, my mother was a very big supporter of me. Nowadays, she doesn't like it. Anyway, so she forwarded it to my father, you know, so he could read it too. And he's, you know making a joke saying I aggressively read the email like because she put aggressive at least five times because I read the email too I don't remember oh excuse me I don't remember the exact words she put in there but she put aggressive a lot so when she told me that I'm going to the principal's office and getting a referral I'm like why I'm doing my assignment you know like that's no way for me to get a referral so then my mother contacted the principal and says void the referral or you're getting district involved. So I, my, my referral was voided. I never got in school suspension. Perfectly fine by me. It was just really, it was really messed up. That's all I have to say. So Remember I told you that if you live in the same neighborhood as someone that went to your school with you, they kind of know you before you go to the school and they're also on your bus and all. And I told you there was a, a kid around my age and then he had an older sister that also went to the, to, to the high school. Let's just say his sister is a real B word. She, I actually wanted to I've actually almost called the cops on her before. Not getting into detail with that. She wanted to pick fights with me in the, um, she wanted to pick fights with me in the neighborhood. No reason. Or like I would be walking by and she would bully me and I'd be, you know, saying this is harassment. Okay, you know? <laughs> so I would, so we were sitting in the bus and like I said, cool kids sat in the back. So I wanted to sit with my friends in the back of the bus. I sat in the back with the bus, you know, the bus. I had my aunt in, they're the really tiny seats. You could sit three people in a seat. <laughs> three sticks. And remember, I'm wide shouldered. I am chubby, okay? 
I am proud to be chubby. That's all I have to say. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, three people could fit in this seat. Three sticks can fit in that seat, in those seats. The uh, people with buses, people that take the bus would understand. <laughs> So I had my arm out in the aisle, you know, and also the aisle is really thin as well. A lot of times I had to walk sideways because I would keep hitting people or their stuff on accident. So to not, to prevent myself from hitting anyone or, you know, getting in someone's way in the aisle, I walk sideways. Cause like I said, I also had, I have wide hips. I could shake those hips. <laughs> Sorry, getting too distracted. So, like I said, I had the arm out in the aisle, you know, just like this. And I'm talking to one of my friends, you know, and they're kind of like diagonally across from me. So I'm, you know, leaning back and I'm talking to them, you know. This, the sister, I'm going to call her the sister. The sister walked by and she was this blonde, pretty, pff, yeah. Everyone loved her. She was the cool, it's like, it's like the freaking Regina George. Although, not as bad. <laughs> Regent George was pretty bad. But she was the one, if you said something wrong to her, she could find someone to beat the complete shit out of you. She completely, completely beat, beat the complete crap out of you. She literally had any way to get you in trouble. And it wasn't even, you know, like her parents or anything. It was her friends. So, yeah. So I had my arm out in the hall, in the thing and it was a little out of I was trying to keep it you know away from you know see you know I was trying to keep my legs out of the aisle so people could walk by so the only way for me to see was to put my arm over the seat to be and my elbow was out in the aisle you know so I wanted to see my friend she walks by and my arm hit her I tapped her trying to move back so then she was like, you hit me. And I'm like, no. So she hit me back. Never hit me. You will get a hit back. <laughs> now, if it's like a play hit, like, hey, what's up, Kai? Yeah, that, that, that's okay. But if you're hitting me to try to fight me, I will, I will fight back. <laughs> I am one of those people that can fight, but doesn't choose not to fight same so she kept hitting me so I elbowed her to say get off me you know so then I got up and I kicked and I well like I said the aisle was really really narrow so I tried to kick her and my knee was in her stomach so then she had both my arms and she was doing this I don't know if uh, you guys hear it. it's called mercy you would do this to someone until they scream mercy yeah she was doing that to me but she did with, she grabbed my wrists and did that. And it was just really, so I spit in her face to get her off me. That was the only way to get her off me. I, now thinking about it now, I could have stopped, I could have uh, let, lowered my leg and stomped on her foot or something, you know, did something a little less germaphobic problems. Cause, but if you think about it, I was completely defenseless. She had both my arms and we were too close for me to kick her. There was, and now I realize there was two options I could have done to be able to get out of there. Yes, I was trying to call for the bus driver, but everybody, you know, it was too loud on the bus and we were in the back of the bus. The bus driver was in the front of the bus. So he couldn't hear. He also was an idiot and didn't give a crap. So the bus driver finally sees us after she slaps me. She didn't, she slapped me. She actually punched me and it hurt. She didn't just hit my cheek, she hit my cheekbone. So that, I got a bruise from that. <laughs> Not fun. So the bus driver finally sees the punch. He sees that and tells me to get off the bus. So I was telling her that she hit me and she kept saying, oh, she started it. You know, she's insane. And so the bus driver pulls me off the bus because he didn't want any more conflict. So I ran over to my principal. Now, 
The principal in sixth grade is not the same principal that was in the seventh grade. He left. So the principal that was in seventh grade, here it comes, knew my brother. <laughs> God, my... <laughs> and he knew my behaviors, too. I hated him. I even was like, hey, brother, you know, Mr. K is our principal now. And he's like, he shouldn't be a principal. That was the first thing that came out of my brother's mouth when he heard that. He was like, he shouldn't be a principal. And if my brother, you know, he went to the school before me. And if I'm like, okay, so you've dealt with him too. If, if you say he doesn't, he shouldn't be a principal, then he shouldn't be a principal. He shouldn't be a principal. <laughs> Nose problems. Allergies. I gotta take my allergy medicine in a few hours. Anyway. So I ran to him because he was the, you know, and he was also talking to the uh, school's police officer. So I'm telling him that I got beaten up on the bus and the bus driver sent me off the bus and all that. And my sister was not even near the bus. She was actually um, helping out a teacher with something. Uh, so she's coming, and then the sister, I have to find a different name for her, but I really, I have so many names I get to, I can name her right now, but I want to keep this as PG-13 or like PG-16 as much as possible. And the reason is, is because, well, most of my channel viewers are between 18 and 24, but that's never accurate enough, but still. So, what, so my sister was walking and this sister, <laughs> I mean, she was just, you know, walking and she comes up to her and says, you should, you should get your sister arrested and that she belongs in a sane asylum strapped up in a straight jacket. I've heard the whole thing. My sister was telling me everything. So the high school administrator, and this one's really rude but she knows how to freaking pin a kid down. So she was actually right there next to my sister. So my sister was telling her, go ahead, like giving her the, go ahead, hit me, because she was going to. So I saw my sister as we were walking with the, with the police officer that goes to my, that works at my school and my principal to the, to, you know, where this is happening. And I was about to run up and say, and I was about to run up and hug her because I love my sister. Ooh. I got pinned against the bus and so did she but not my sister the other person and I was saying I didn't you know I was saying she hit me she punched me and then by the time that happened the bruise started to show up a little more you know when you get a bruise it doesn't show up right away it starts to form well it started to form on my face and you're wondering why am I pointing to this cheek? Because I remember it was this cheek. Now here comes the unfair part. She was the thro one throwing fists at me. The punishment. I'm not going to over exaggerate, but this was the worst punishment problem that I've dealt with. The most unfair punishment problem. This person got three days of bus suspension. That's 100% okay. That doesn't bother your classes. That's not even on a record. College doesn't look at bus suspensions. They look at like ISS and OSS, in-school suspension, out-of-school suspension. You guys know that stuff. You know, that kind of stuff. They look at that stuff. They don't look at bus suspensions. At least I know they don't. But that's what I'm saying. So that's like a minor thing. Oh, you only got three days of bus suspension in your whole school year. Okay, yeah, you know, that's, that's not a big thing. We don't have buses here in college. Unless, you know, they do. So. She got three days of bus suspension and I got three days of ISS. I didn't throw a punch at all. I was hitting her, but she threw the first punch. And I asked, why did I get, you know, ISS and this person got, you know, bus suspension? You weren't supposed to hit back. That's a bad thing to do. I found out later is because I'm disabled and I already had a record. 
<laughs> and this is why so I go, I, my sister, we couldn't get on the bus. The bus had to leave, you know. I was sitting in the office and this guy doesn't know my brother, but he was a very big problem in my life. We have three assistant principals, one for each grade. Now our assistant principals move up with us. So my sixth grade prin assistant principal I had was my, is my seventh grade one. I'm gonna call her Mr. Mar Mr. Martin. I don't think he go, works at the school anymore. He was he was an idiot. He and also Miss Buttface kept saying, oh, Mariah is such a beautiful name. You know, Mariah Carey is famous and stuff. There are so many famous and beautiful people that are named Mariah. I don't care that beautiful, famous people are named Mariah. That is not my name. <laughs> so that's why I say he's an idiot because they kept steering towards, oh, it's not that big of a problem. So, like I said, I got three days of ISS. And he, <laughs> my mother heard, and she's like, oh, what did, you know, cause she knew who exactly this person was that fought with me. So I, you know, she was like, what they get? It's like, oh, bus suspension. Of course she got in severe trouble by her mother or whoever she lived with because they're forced to take the bus every day. So she did get in trouble at home, but she didn't get any in trouble at school. So my mother was like, okay, next thing that they do to you that's completely out of line, let me know. Now they started doing this recently. It's called like on track or something thing where you have no, you have no in school suspension or out of school suspension. You have no referrals and honor roll for an entire quarter, which is approximately two, approximately one and a half to two months. All depending on how long the school year is. So they just started doing that the second I got ISS. So. There was the school dance. Now this, now this on track thing would let you use your phone and lunch and during passes. And as long as you wore this on track lanyard thing, the teachers couldn't get you in trouble. It's only if you had it in class. They also had school dances and I actually wanted to do so. I did some of the school dances, but I really hated them. They were just not my thing. So what ended up happening, what was ending up happening is I also got transferred teams, by the way. I got a whole new set of teachers. I'm away from his butt face. I was like, thank God. So I got a lot of cool new teachers and I love them to death. I still kept with one of my other teachers because I had double block intensive reading, which means two periods of intensive reading. She knows my brother, but she is still a freaking sweetheart. I love this one. <laughs> but anyway, so I was completely away from Mrs. Foote and Miss Butt Face. I was away from all of that. Thank God. Yes, every once in a while I would see them, but like they weren't an everyday thing. Like I would sit with a few a few minutes with them. Yeah, no, it was nothing. So they, my English teacher, well, language art. In a memento, it's my brother. Speaking of the brother. Hmm. Did I actually take off the passcode off my phone? Sorry about that. My brother and I are playing Pokemon Go. Okay, so, where was I? Oh yeah, my, it, well, he called it in. <laughs> I hope this, okay. I'm gonna have to tell you it. I'm gonna have to get back to this. I now know how my dad feels. Okay, so where was I? Yeah, I thought I was away from all of Miss Foot and this is probably just my brother saying okay. Okay, good. All that is situated. We play Pokemon Go together. Yep. We play Pokemon Go. I play Pokemon Go. I don't play it as often though. <sighs> so where was I? Oh, excuse me. That's the dinner going down. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, um, yes, yeah, so 
I thought I was away from all Miss Foot and Miss Buttface, okay? I, I was away from it for a very long time. I was able to also avoid them because our two teams, I would say, were on the way other side of the class of the schools. Like, they were on the opposite end. So I had literally no interaction. Probably the only interactions I would have with them would be like during like really weird passing or if we had groups together you know because sometimes our teams would collaborate which all right so uh my english teacher i don't know if he works there anymore but he's a nice guy he also helped me um produce one of my really small skits that i really i used to love writing skits still do Anyway, so he was saying, oh, by the way, the school dance is here. You know, we don't have a lot of staff volunteering this time. If you guys want to volunteer, you can. So I'm like, so I raised my hand because they said only on track students could go to the dance. So I, and he said he was hosting the dance, like his team was hosting the dance. So I asked him, I was like, do, do on track people have to vault? Like, uh, do you have to be on track to help with the dance? Because I wanted to help. He was saying no. He didn't say, he, he said no. So I'm like, good. So I wrote down the date. I told my father, you know, because my mother was still going to be at work by the time the dance was over. Um, or she would be like on her way home or something. So I told my father, I was like, hey, by the way, the dance ends at blah, blah, blah. You know, call, I'll call you when I'm out. And he's like, oh, okay, you know, have fun, you know. So this day is the day of the dance. I don't even remember what the theme was. But they were like making all cool party games. Like, this is really, really weird. But you take an empty tissue box and you put ping pong balls in it and then you tie it around your waist and you have to shake to try to get all the ping pong balls out of your uh, tissue box. And it's really weird, but it's really fun. And it's really fun. I, I, I was able to test it out to see if it actually, because they were like, oh, we don't know if this string is, should we just tie it around the waist or should we tie it around the up more higher you know we were trying to get it to where it wouldn't slide down as much so i helped test that out before the dance of course so <laughs> that was a lot of fun though guy that got a lot of work out of me <laughs> so it was the day of the dance and there's a whole bunch of people there you know a lot of students there shockingly there was a lot that were on track i'm walking up to the i'm walking up to the dance um the door to it so there was a lot of people waiting for the day of the dance it was always at, right after school after all the buses leave and after all the carpool things leave you know kind of like where all the teachers are mellowing out in their classrooms so i'm walking up and i run into miss buttface oh, i didn't know she was helping out with the dance so i'm still walking up and she's like sorry no one's allowed in the dance in the gym yet or like i actually they were in the, held in the cafeteria but i said no, no one's allowed inside the dance yet into the you know cafeteria yet. and I said oh no I'm um I'm helping she gives me a wide eye looked and yelled is she really helping and because nobody was near the door so I'm like wow the way she said it though like she's like really she's helping like come on you you really want her you know she kind of gave that type of attitude and she was also saying you're not on track you're not even allowed to be here so I'm like, I was told on track people, you know, I didn't have to be on track to help with the dance. So then my English teacher does come out and tell me that he, it was a big misunderstanding. He's sorry. Now be mindful. This was after the, after school hours. So all the buses were gone and all the cars were gone. So I had no way to get home. My mother made me take my phone with me. Back then it was a very weird phone. We had the cool phone. We didn't have iPhones back then, guys. Well, it was the start of the iPhone generation. The starting of Apple making a phone, literally. <laughs> so that happened. So he came out and was telling me and I'm like, so I literally stayed after school and I'm gonna have to call my father, God knows where he is, to pick me up literally right after school because you guys never told me so miss buttface saw i was trying to you know say I, you know can i at least stay here you know i have no ride and stuff 
she came up to me and says that I'm not allowed to be on campus and told me to go stand out in the bus loop or stand out in the car loop. Like she was telling me to get off campus, literally get off campus because I'm not allowed to be there. I really wish I was able to freaking record this. But also if I tried to record it, there were so many people, you know, talking and all that. And it was just like really weird. So I had to go to the office, calling my father. I had tears in my eyes because she was really, she was hurting me. She was like telling me to, demanding I get off campus. Like that I would, like I was a disease and I was, like I was sick and had a disease and I, she didn't want to get any of the other people infected. It was, that was kind of how she was saying it. And it was just really mean. Like, I know there are some rude people in this world, but like, I was confused, one, because I was told something totally different. That's one of the things that upsets me the most is where I hear something and then I hear something completely different, but about the same topic. I could give off a really good example, but that's kind of really personal to me. Oh, here we go. Here's a good example. Um, I was about to say, oh uh, yes, um, I get a birth control shot every three months. Oh, your birth control shot will make you still have your female problems, but they won't be as bad. Okay. Then I hear from another person, oh, sometimes it's not, it's very rare, but you won't get your female problem every month at all. So I'm like, so it's a 50-50. Or, well, that's not actually a very good, you know, scenario. Um, I'm trying, it's really hard to explain it without saying something way too personal I don't want to say right now on camera. Because also we're also, we're also not into that part of my most recent years. If you did watch the My Injuries video, you do know I was in a group home. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that there. Okay, you know how you're, I'm, I am capable enough to know what my care is, you know, like kind of keep up in the loop with all that. So the staff weren't the most informable with me. They really didn't want me knowing certain things. So some staff, not all of them. So what ended up happening was I was like, I asked about something um, that, you know, was, you know, with the group home, I was asking, a, you know, a question about it. And they told me something. And then I talked to the higher, you know, positioned people. And they tell me something totally different. So I'm like, who do I believe? You know, so I'm, that, that is just upsets me 100%. Because it's like, I was just told this, but then I was just told this, and they're the same exact topic, but two different facts. So it's like, what's the real fact? I have to lean back now, my back's hurting. I slouch. I'm chubby. Yep, I'm a chubby blob. Let's move the camera a little closer at least. Okay, so I had, I was calling my father hysterical crying. He got, he was able to pick me up. My mother was like, why are you crying? And I told her the whole thing about Miss Buttface and how she treated me mostly. And she was like, I'm, I'm contacting district. Now, I don't know if some states are called this. I know in other countries, you know, it's different, but you know, there's a, a school district type thing you know like they're the they're the presidents of the schools of your section of what school you, of what zone you're in okay so my mother contacted the district the next day i was called into the principal's office mr k is still the principal he was like do you know what happened that day I didn't like them. So at first I was like, why am I here? You know, I didn't do anything wrong. He was like, I want to know the story. <clears throat> and Miss Buttface was in the office with him. So I said that she was demanding I get off campus, like I'm a disease. 
So Miss Butfield's going, oh no, I didn't say that. You know, I was telling her that she should get away from the crowd because she, you know, she's not supposed to be at the dance. <coughs> Dry mouth. My meds give me severe dry mouth. They give me severe dry mouth problems. And this humidity and allergy problems doesn't help at all. That's all. So she was all saying, you know, she was saying yes, that I would get away from everyone so the teachers aren't confused about who's in the dance and who's not. And be mindful, we had to purchase tickets. I purchased a ticket. Now the tickets weren't expensive, they were $5. I also, my mother also explained in there that she did give me money for a ticket. So she would like the money back. So I'm all like, what am I doing to make these people hate me? So they were all being all secretive, kind of, in a way. They were like, is there anyone around you? Was there anyone around you? Like, they were all scared. They were petrified. Because they kept asking so many questions so fast. Until it got to the point, it was like, I need to get back to class. I'm, there's a test coming up. I lied, just to get out of there. They're like, oh, we won't make you miss your test, but, you know, we just want to know everything. And it's like, I needed to get out of that office. So then I left the office. Finally, after all that. But I would say a week later, I get call, I get, um, <laughs> I did say I had bladder problems. And it wasn't to where, it was mostly to where if I laughed too hard or I sneezed, I had a very weak bladder. It was something that it was a medical thing that kind of went on with my life and I don't talk about it much because I'm like 12, 13 years old having bladder problems. It's embarrassing, you know? <laughs> and I know some people have it and they can't help it. I had that kind of problem where I couldn't help it sometimes. So like I said, I would keep a change of clothes. I would keep a change of clothes in my bag. So what ended up happening was I had a bladder leak. I was told to go change. And then I was told the second I got back to um, go to the, go to the uh, office, there's a, you know, there's a meeting going on in there. So, <laughs> what was really shocking, remember, I, I changed teams, so I was nowhere in the way of Miss Buttface. Shocking. Miss Buttface is also the leader of the ESE people. The ESE kids. The ones that are... It's hard to say. I'm sorry. But I don't want to sound like, you know, call them really messed up or anything. Because that's just, that's just rude. So I was in the... So she's the leader of the ESE students. Now I have an IEP. Or had one because I graduated already. An IEP is an individual education plan. A lot of ESE and EBD, I don't, I don't know what EBD stands for, but it's like, ESE is like the really disabled kids, like the ones that can't do much at all. Like they can barely write their name or speak, you know. EBD is more behavioral, like my level kind of stuff. Well, they didn't have an EBD program at my school, but she was the um, leader of the ESE kids. So, you know, cause I had an IEP, she had to be in every meeting which sucks. So I'm walking in and they were also told that I'm coming to drop off my dirty clothes to my mother. I'm about to walk in the door and I hear Miss Buttface, she's doing this for attention. She's, you know, leaking herself just so she can have all the attention in this school. I heard my mother and I laugh because I knew that it was going to is off my mother. Now, like I told you, my mother and I don't have the best relationship. But back then, she, if you do this to one of the kids, oh, you would have gotten the horns. It's like you mess with the bull, you get the horns. I wanted to be there. But then when they knocked on the door and said, hey, she's here, by the way. 
and I was sent back to the front of the office. I couldn't be in the meeting. So what ended up happening, and I can tell you who was in the meeting, because I was in there for like the very last 10 minutes of it. It was two district people, my assistant principal, Mr. M, then Mr. K, the principal, Miss Buttface, my mother, my father, and my step-grandmother. No, Bird, you weren't alive then. You weren't born yet. Bird, you weren't born at that time. Yes, I know, you were probably very handsome. <sighs> this bird. But I did have the bird before him, uh, another bird before him. That was alive then. Spike. Only my OG viewers would know who Spike is. Rest in peace, Spike. I miss him. I miss him a lot. But he's more annoying than Spike. I just going to tell you that. <laughs> but anyway, so I was in there and I was, of course, given the last 10 minutes of it. So the district lady asked me, what do I think of all this? You know, they already went over everything and I already been through all the events. So I was like, they were thinking, well, you know, let's get the students saying this. So one of the district ladies was like, what do I think, what do you think of all that's going on? And I brought up the bullying thing as well. I said, you guys didn't point out the bullying thing. So they're all, let, so the district people are looking completely confused. My mother forgot to say it. So she was like, oh yeah, I forgot, you know. I was saying, so I turned to Mr. M and Miss Buttface, and I, oh, Mr. Martin, not Mr. M. Mr. M's my English teacher. Mr. Martin. And I turned to both Mr. Martin and Miss Buttface, and I said, people are still calling me Mariah. I know that there's a bunch of famous people that are named Mariah, but that is not my name. So I don't like it when you guys say that, oh, Mariah is such a beautiful name because that is still not my name. Gold star for Kai. They went dead silent. Mr. K said that was very rude of me to say that. But my mother said, well, that's what they told her. So, you know, she has a right to tell them that's not what she, that's, she's literally, I was literally just saying that I don't like that you guys are saying that to me. That's being the bigger person in a way. I don't like that you're calling me a mean name. Can you please stop? That's pretty much what I was saying to them. Like, and it was like, I understand that there's a whole bunch of people that are named Mariah and it's a beautiful name, but that's not my name. So can you stop trying to say that it's a beautiful name? You know, you should be proud that somebody's calling you Mariah because that's not my name. <laughs> And I know a lot of people say, oh, my name gets mixed up all the time, but it was more of a bully aspect and people are still doing it. And what I mean by still is they're all, they're, I do run into some people and I kind of will tell this story. Should I say it now? Because kind of this, this person I met in completely in public that went to the middle school I went to. So yeah, I'll tell, I'll tell you guys the story in a little bit, but yeah, so that happened. About a month later, my mother divorced, uh, fa leaves my father and takes me and my sister with her, you know, brainwashes me, blah, 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 blah. We go to my grandparents' house. So I spent the last, ha I'd say the last month of school getting drove to the school by my sister. <laughs> I can just tell you the first day, because remember I said the high school campus and the middle school campus were on the same ground. So they shared the same grounds, but they were two totally different campuses. I didn't know the high school campus that well. I only knew where the office was and where one of the parking lots were. Because one time I was off of school, I think because I was suspended OSS, and I had to deliver something. My dad was like, oh crap, you know, your sister forgot this. You know, well, let's go drive over to uh, the high school and drop it off for her. And I had to turn something into her. That was it. That was like the only reason I, oh, and of course, you know, you had to get a, you know, I went to my brother's, um, you know, orientation, my sister's orientation. I mean, they were like literally, the, the, my sister's high school orientation and my middle school orientation were literally back to back. It was funny because my sister's was the day before mine and mine was, you know, that day. So it was really funny. So... 
Anyway, so the first day, I'm all like, okay, thank you for dropping me off. Which way do I go? My sister's like, oh, you just go that way. You know, there's a path. So I'm all like, okay. I'm walking and I'm getting lost. And I know it's 10 minutes before the first bell. So I'm like, shoot, if I don't find my way, I'm going to, yeah. So I tried calling my sister. She didn't pick up. So I was able to fla flag down one of her friends and says, hey, can you call, get my sister to call me? I'm lost. And she's like, why are you on the campus? I'm like, my sister drives me to school now. She's like, oh, okay. So she calls her and says, hey, she's over by, I think it was like the red portables or something. They had, yeah, they're color coded. Okay, weird. So my sister, you know, and also another thing is my sister was, um, she wasn't limping or anything. She had, she couldn't run. She recently injured her knee. So she, wa she wasn't able to run anymore, but still was very slow. So she was like, can you show her the way, you know? So her friend, so it's like, I'm sorry that I'm keeping you from hanging out with her. And she's like, no, 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 it's fine. I, you know, she's like, you're not even supposed to be on this campus, but I understand why and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, side story. Now there is this girl in my middle school that I wouldn't say was very rude, but she was one of those people that I tried to be nice to, but she wouldn't have it. You know, she didn't want, it, want me to even be nice. Like I told her, hey, I like your shirt. She was like, I don't care what you say. You know, like she really was rude to me. I'm, you know, I'm trying to be nice, like your shirt. She dyed her hair once. I said, oh, that's a really good, I like that color on you. And she's like, oh, I don't care what you say or something like that. So this is kind of December of 2018. So this is really recent. I'm working at Wendy's, hiring full-time losers. There's a meme going around there. Okay, so I'm working at Wendy's and I'm working the cash register. I'm helping prepare someone's meal. And um, she comes up and order something. Now I didn't recognize her. I kept looking at her I'm like, she looks super familiar. I put her out her meal and she's like, hey, didn't she go to Seven Springs Middle? I'm like, yeah. And she was like, oh my God, I remember you. And I'm like, yeah, thanks, you know? So she was also one of the bullies. Now I say this to a lot of the bullies I kind of meet nowadays, cause I, I don't meet them all the time. I have met a few. So, I couldn't say this in the work thing. I was so glad I was getting off shift literally in the next few minutes. So I was glad she didn't leave right away. So, you know, I gave her her food and I just said, oh, it's nice to see you again. It's, it was very awkward by the way. <laughs> so I was like, oh, enjoy your meal. It's nice to see you again. She's like, yeah, she was actually really nice then. So I'm, I grab, I, you know, do whatever, you know, after the, as my shift ends, I finish everything and then grab my bag and she's sitting there outside in the outdoor area of Wendy's and I'm waiting for my dad and because like I said I didn't drive so I had to get carpooled a lot I told her hey by the way thanks for bullying me and she looks at me really confused and I'm like remember you used to bully me in middle school and I told her I'm not trying to be rude but I do actually genuinely genuinely thank you for bullying me and she's like why I'm like because of you bullying me I would have never graduated high school. I would have never gotten a job and I would never have been able to live on my own and be able to toughen up. So she was like, thanks. But I felt proud of saying that. So to all the bullies and people that are rude to me, thank you for doing this. Hate comments don't bother me as much. It's when they get over spammed and all that, it's annoying, but my, I thank you for bullying me. Like I said, exactly to her. I wouldn't have able to gotten a job or had the experience so I knew what to deal with when I did get bullied. I wouldn't have been able to get my own place. You know, I wouldn't be able to actually live. And oh, I know a lot of people are probably confused, like why would bullying have to do with that? When you're bullied, you get depressed and you get down. You want to be alone and you, when you're trying to get a job or get a house or whatever, you have to be mature and straight faced. The bullying toughened me to where I can, I can be mature. <clears throat> Sorry. At 
time. I should have added that part. <laughs> yeah, I can't be mature half the time, but when it's a serious situation, I can be very, I can be mature. So that's why I thank the bullies. This video is going to be an hour long. I try not to make my videos so long, but okay. So we finally got to the part of the divorcing next episode. Eighth grade and up is the breaking point of my depression and really put me in a horrible place. I will thank my mother for completely destroying me because if it wasn't for my mother, I now know what to expect when someone does the same thing that she did to me. I know exactly what to expect. So thank you. Now, I gotta go edit. Anything you want to say, Bird? You were literally saying everything right at the beginning of this clip. Do you want to say anything now? He just gave me his... He just turned away from me. He showed me his butt. He is so mean. Bird, I am trying to actually give you the floor. <laughs> See, when I give him the floor, he doesn't want to talk. But when I talk, he wants to talk. <laughs> What's wrong with this bird? <sighs> Maybe I'll do a video of a story time with Kai living with the bird. You guys would never understand it. <laughs> All right, well, I gotta go and edit. Ye old computer, if you are going to cooperate with me, please cooperate with me now. I really gotta edit. It hasn't been able to uh, cooperate with me, so I haven't been able to do stuff. Well, I hope I get this out by Saturday. Bye. You see? Everything's on my own. Here's me turning off the camera.